Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent and Merciful, I praise Allah, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, and I send peace and blessings to all of the prophets from the beginning of time. From the prophet Adam to Noah, to Abraham, to Moses, to Jesus, to Muhammad, the seal and finality of prophets and messengers, may Almighty God Allah have mercy upon them and forgive them forever. And I begin in the name of the righteous with the greetings of the people of paradise. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The 21st century is an age of great material progress. Humanity has been able to develop the ability to move across the planet with great speed. We are communicating with each other with enormous amounts of information. But with this great technology, there are also great contradictions. With the ability to send information from one part of the planet to another, we also are finding great confusions amongst the people. We are finding nations attacking nations, people living in great tension, and one of the main reasons for this is ignorance. This series of programs is intended to bring untold stories from world history, gems of wisdom and knowledge to try to bring about a new understanding, to heal some of the wounds, and to help the next generation to live in this world in peace. The story begins for me as a young African-American growing up in a very powerful educational system. I question my teachers from an early age. I asked them questions concerning the contradictions that I saw within the pictures and the bits of information. One of the first questions that I asked from a young age was about the explorer Christopher Columbus. I was given an image of Christopher Columbus landing on the shores of America. He lands with his boats and, and his Spanish uh, sailors and he meets people on the shore and the caption underneath in the picture says that Christopher Columbus discovered America. My question was to the teacher, how can you discover a place when the people have been living there for over 20,000 years? Was 1492 really the age of discovery? Was it the first time that human beings reached the Americas? The answer that I got was that yes, Columbus discovered America. And yes, it was in 1492. This I recognized from a young age was a form of cultural imperialism. It was dishonesty that had interpreted itself on a high level of knowledge. But I continued in my questions. I asked about the African continent. Did Africa have great civilizations? The answer was no. And I challenged this concept. Because when we looked into history, we found great pyramids in Egypt, the Sphinx, hieroglyphics, philosophy. We looked down into the Niger River and we found Timbuktu and Jenne in great centers of learning. Going further south, we recognize the great Zimbabwe in South Africa. And in looking at the ancient Egyptians, we were taught that the great pyramids were developed and science was developed thousands of years before Christ. But the Greeks, who were given the uh, glory of beginning knowledge and science, only began their civilization somewhere around 600 B.C. What was the real answer to my question? I continued on and I asked about the Moors and the Saracens that I was seeing in many of the movies. And Salah al-Din al-Ayubi was shown as a great leader of the Muslims. He was a person who struggled as a warrior, but at the same time had high noble qualities. And so when I found his name and others in the Arabic language, constantly appearing in the text, I tried to question more and more concerning what actually was going on in history. Later on, 
I found that there was a need for a type of deconstruction, that history had to be taken apart and then reassembled in such a fashion that people would benefit from what had gone on in the past in a positive, objective way. Concerning Islam and the Muslims, when we look at the original sources, we find that Islam is a way of life that is shared by people throughout this planet. And that according to the teachings of Islam, prophets came to every nation and every tribe. In the text of the Quran, the book of scripture of the Muslims, in a chapter called Surah An-Nahl, the chapter of the bee, in verse 36, it says to us in the Arabic language, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ اِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ التَّاغُوتِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ هَدَى اللَّهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ حَقَّتْ عَلَيْهِ الضَّلَالَةِ فَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْذُرُوا كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُكَذِّبِينَ Almighty Allah reveals to us, and certainly we sent to every nation a messenger saying, Worship Allah and avoid false deities. Of the people were some whom Allah guided, and of them were those upon whom error was decreed. So travel through the earth and see what was the end of those who denied the truth. In this uh, verse, we see a text that gives us an understanding shared by Muslims all over the planet. That prophets came to Asia, to Africa, to Europe, and the Americas, and we learn from the original sources of Islam that what was common in the early peoples of the planet was the concept of Tawheed, the concept of unity, and the oneness of God. In Mandarin Chinese, the people express this Tawheed by saying Shang-Ti, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Akhnaten of ancient Egypt taught the belief in one God. Many say that he was teaching about the power behind the sun, and he created a revolution in ancient Egypt. In Africa, all throughout the African continent, the concept of the great cosmic spirit was shared by every nation. In Burundi, the people of Burundi, in speaking about God, say Imana. When they speak about the attributes of God, they say Bisabwe. He alone is worthy of worship. They also say Habimana. Only He truly exists. Habonimana. Only he does as he wills. The Akan of West Africa know God as he who knows or sees all things. The Yoruba of West Africa say, only God is wise. The Bakongo of Central Africa say, he is made by no other and no one beyond him is. In southern Africa, we find the Zulu nation, who refer to the Creator as Umdali. The Kosa people of southern Africa say Qamata, and they add Katayi, or Umdali, and it becomes Qamata Katayi, which means in Arabic, Allahu Akbar. God is the greatest, and over everything. The Sutu people in the south say Ramasedi, which means, he from whom comes light. In the Americas, there are strong references about the Cherokee Nation, a strong nation of people who had large cities with over 100,000 people. And they were known for their strong belief in the Great Spirit. Information has come to us that from the texts or the oral traditions of the elders, when the Cherokees would begin their prayers, they would say, Ya Allah. And so we find in the Aboriginal people in Australia, 
in South America, in Europe, and throughout the world, the concept of Tawheed, the concept of the Great Spirit, is found everywhere. So when the last Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, appeared, he did not bring a new religion, but he brought out of the people what already existed in them, and that is Tawheed. He was the seal of the prophets, the finality of the messengers. And it is reported during his last major sermon in Arafah, he brought to the people a strong message of the oneness of God. He also spoke to them and brought them the understanding that there should be no more economic oppression and that usury and interest is cancelled. He confirmed the rights of women. He broke down the roots of racism. And he established the Qur'an and the Sunnah, his way and his tradition, as the keys to success. He sent his followers in all directions. And it is reported that most of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, died outside of Arabia. When we look at history, we find that no other religion, no other ideology, no conquering general, no people spread so rapidly and so far. Within 100 years, Islam had reached the Atlantic Ocean on the west and China and the Pacific in the east. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought a message that was so clear and was so simple to the people that they were able to grasp this oneness. They were able to relate to the prophets and messengers who had come from the beginning of time. And so Islam spread rapidly and people of all colors, of all nationalities, embraced this religion from the 6th century. People of all classes, the rich and the poor, male and female, came into this faith in large numbers and Islam established itself, not only in Arabia, in Arabia, but it established itself in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, and we also have proof that it was even in the Americas. Let's take a break for a few moments and we'll come back to continue our discussion. <laughs> Sheikh Asim, can you tell us the significance of this event, the washing of Al Kaaba in Islam? A great privilege to any Muslim to take part in such a ritual. Uh, honoring the sacred shrine of Islam was a custom before the Prophet. Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was the last of a long series 